Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Breeze's Saints going up against Tyrod Taylor's Bills. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the home of the Bills since 1973, there's a look at the newly named New Era Field just outside of Buffalo, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Set to go now on a wet and rainy afternoon. And off we go from New Era Field. On the return, it's Brandon Tate. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Out come the Buffalo Bills off an impressive 34-14 win over Oakland in Week 8, and Tyrod Taylor completed 74% of his passes, and yes, it was only for 6.1 yards per pop, but that's what he does. And Buffalo, Charles, 5-2. and two. Yeah, 5-2, and two, and part of it is the mantra preached by their head coach, Sean McDermott, who made his bones as a defensive coordinator in the league. So he wants to have a defense that takes the ball away, but he really insists that his own offense protects the football, and they've had just three turnovers all year they're plus 14 in turnover difference i've noticed you say mantra i say mantra is it mantra 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 220 potato, 20, potato. 220 <laughs> 221 whatever it takes oh that's just not fair and now room to run and they finally get him down but not before he reaches the 34. a big game there on the first play of the game 42 yards well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. Keep on the ground with McCoy. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And this whole line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. They go play action here on first down. And this is caught at the eight. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, 
big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. So they're operating in the red zone. Here's Taylor. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it second and goal. When you throw it this close to the goal line, usually you're thinking touchdown. Here they actually complete it but lose yardage. When you're this close to the goal line, you have to anticipate that maybe you're going to see a defense that you can make a case that there's 11 in the box. There's just no room. So I'm with you. You've got to find a way to push things downfield a little bit. Any type of space is better than what we just saw there. And that end result, not one that's satisfactory to them. to the ground with McCoy. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three. Carter, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground. And then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Trying to finish off this opening drive. From the three, this is third and goal. Come on, let's go! They'll try and run it with McCoy. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. He loses four, and it brings up four. Brandon, I believe that they were in four down territory, and that's what they were thinking. But after the loss... <laughs> I've got to kick the field goal. No way I'm going to go for it in this situation. But you know some of these coaches, they're extremely unpredictable. And they may go ahead and press it. On fourth down, Sean McDermott trots the field goal unit out there. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the Bills' opening drive yields three. So the opening drive for them here on their home turf results in a field goal. Now that's the way you want to get things started. Your stadium, your crowd, you've got the ball. Put points on the board first and let everyone start to celebrate. After the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Well, last week, New Orleans won over Chicago 20-12. Now at 5-2 as Drew Brees brings him onto the field. And in that game against Chicago, Brees 23-28, Charles, and an eyelash under 300 yards, 299. That's pretty efficient. Actually, that's darn good because the Bears came in with the sixth-ranked defense. But how about that? Not throwing a touchdown pass for Drew Brees the second time in his last five home games. And prior to that, he'd done an NFL record 60 straight times. So this is unusual. But I think he's enjoying this season, watching his defense play so well. And he knows he doesn't have to go out there each and every time and light up the scoreboard. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Quarterback Drew Brees and head coach Sean Payton understand the passing game as well as anyone in the NFL, which led to a rating last year of number one in passing and number one in total overall offense. But the thing that they really do well is get the ball downfield. They understand holes in defenses, find receivers that way. But what they need to add, the running game, back to their mix. When they went to the Super Bowl and won it, they were number six in the NFL. Last season, number 16. And it's caught. Kobe Flaner. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Breeze finding Flater for New Orleans first. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Shaq Lawson's one of those guys that after a while you quit just trying to define him by a position. Defensive end, outside linebacker, doesn't matter. He knows how to get off field and spill some plays. So disruptive. How, what makes him so disruptive? I think it's strength. If you see his upper body, I mean, he's got some strength up there and some really good hands. But he's got some surprising quickness as well to get him upfield. Again, they'll run with Ingram. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. Defensively, starting lineup for the Bills and a disruptor on the line, certainly Shaq Lawson. Loved him during his time at Clemson. Really, really liked him when he played in the national championship game because he wasn't 100% and had gotten hurt in the game before and found a way back onto the field and made a difference. Extra DB on the field for the Bills here on third down. Yeah, maybe think and pass. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And it's complete to Flanner. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Now the rookie out of Tennessee. This is Alvin Kamara. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. And here comes play number six on this drive. On second down, here's Breeze. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys did not play offense. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he's got Sneed. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Willie Sneed, 39 yards. And the Saints have taken the early lead. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So that drive in total eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans.
Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now the Bills offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about Toe that. <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> Here we go. One, nine, nine. On first and ten, it's Taylor. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. McCoy. Now it's Taylor. Wide open receiver complete. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A really good pickup of 28 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, Bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here we go. Taylor. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's Taylor to throw. Left side caught by Matthews. A gain of six there on first. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Taylor will throw again. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And he's brought down. The Bills passing game getting him down the field. They've got another first down. He's so multi-talented, isn't he? He can catch the ball, not just on screens as we saw there. Get him out in the open field. He makes big-time plays. Had 50 catches a year ago. Yeah, and even 50. That was the most he's had since 2013. zone this time. Here we go. One, nine, 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 nine. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he'll get four there down to about the 12-yard line. 
on any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Come on, let's go! Red 38! Red 38! They snap it at one. Now it's Taylor. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. nice to have that big reliable target you can go to each and every time a lot of people see that position as a fallback throw it to them when all else fails not at all this guy can make plays and that's exactly what he just did yeah play here for a touchdown and it's through and that makes the lead 10-7 So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. What an impressive stat on Drew Brees as the Saints come back out on offense. Last week against the Bears, he hit his 6,000th career completion. That is worthy of a standing ovation from all of us who love football, right? He deserves that. <laughs> Just a third in NFL history to hit that threshold. Brett Favre, Peyton Manning before him. And think of all the quarterbacks who played this great game. They're all looking down, those who are no longer with us, and saying, I didn't even get a chance to throw it 6,000 times, <laughs> let alone complete it this much. Yeah, not bad for a second-round draft pick. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Now, prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 10-7 our score, and we're back to upstate New York after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and six to start things out. Shotgun now for Breeze. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. 
Ramon Humber coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Here's Breeze to throw. And he can't quite corral it defensively. Maybe some space to go the other direction if he had caught it. That brings up fourth down now. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Now the ninth-year man from LSU, Thomas Morstead on to punt. Back deep for the Bills, Brandon Tate. Now it's Tate. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. They'll start on the ground with McCoy. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Let's go! Brand again, it's McCoy. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Here we go! What? They go play action with Taylor. Rush coming, and he's taken down. A.J. Klein in there to drop him for a long of 10 and it'll be fourth and long man he got in there so quickly Charles what could the offense have done to adjust and account for that but what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes maybe you go to max protection the biggest ones maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean but in that case that didn't happen zero accountability and a sack resulted Colton Schmidt, fourth-year man from UC Davis, on to punt it away. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And now the Saints get set to trot out there. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. First down. The catch made over the middle by Ginn. 
and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That looked like a pretty good rack combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. They go play action for Ingram. Now Breeze. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. First down is Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So second and ten here. Now, Breeze again. He's got his man. It's Brandon Coleman. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A good pick up there of 20 yards. three yard line give him a couple on the catch it's second and eight it's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up boy then you've got real trouble trying to get him down but they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down Second down, Ingram. And a good run as he manages seven yards down to the 17. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. The Saints on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They stay on the ground. This time it's Camara. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Hey, 
Breeze to throw on second down. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael O.O. Matawanui. A five-yard touchdown. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. And a play fake down near the goal line here worked out well. Anytime you can make them think that you're going to run the ball and go to that play action pass, you see the end result. Usually a touchdown. Is that harder? Is the play fake harder to defend for the defense near the goal line or no? Because there's not as much room to work with. It is harder because down near the goal line, you're thinking much more of a running play, especially if people run out big formations. So it is harder to defend. That time, a nine-play drive. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back onto the field now comes the Bills' offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Going to drop this off to McCoy, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. Now Taylor going to hand this one off to McCoy. And that play will go nowhere, losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats, but really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Now Taylor. Going deep for Benjamin. And this is taken in at the five. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Kelvin Benjamin, 49 yards. And the Bills are in for six. Well, they had gone run the previous play. Nice little setup. This time they go play action. Defense bites a bit, and they hit for a big play in the end zone. So they sold it really well, didn't they? Because of just what you described, they ran into the previous play, come back with the same action, and now they step back and throw it and get a big play for a touchdown. But what happens as a defensive back is your eyes have to go to the right place. You always hear Coach talk about, are your eyes in the right spot? Well, this time the eyes went to the play action. It froze their feet. They weren't moving, and he went off past them and caught the pass for a touchdown. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it culminates in a Bills touchdown.
Here's Hauschka now to kick it away. To return it, Alvin Kamara spinning away. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. Begin on the ground with Kamara, and he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. to the ground this time with Ingram and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line 12 yards there as they move the chains tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line they didn't just gash him there they blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through I think if he comes back to the huddle he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble down carry. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Now they'll throw with Breeze. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. But the effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And Gim's got it! 19 yards that time for number 19. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? They should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. to the running game. It's Ingram. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down.
I'm ready now for second and nine. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. Back to Buffalo after this. A reminder with halftime approaching, when we get there, we'll ship you off to Orlando. Larry Ridley will have first half highlights and analysis. And I hope he's iced down his throat because he's got a lot to get through <laughs> because we've had no shortage of points scored in the first half. It has been a fun track meet. The Saints on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This time it's third and three. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. I'm not sure we can spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. On fourth down, off goes Drew Breeze, and on comes the Saints kicker, Will Lutz, for the field goal attempt. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And that is no good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. And the attention now shifts to Kelvin Benjamin, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. First down with Taylor toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there, and that'll bring up second down. And with that incompletion, want to get your thoughts on the game of the week from week eight. I think it had to be Seahawks-Texans, was it not? I don't see how any other game could equal that. Talk about ebb and flow, back and forth, and an amazing quarterback duel with Deshaun Watson, the rookie from Houston, and, of course, Russell Wilson with Seattle. Wilson Seahawks. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. And now the Saints are going to take a timeout on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Third and long, Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. Here we go! Red 98! Red 98! Now a handoff looking right, and he will lose yardage on the play, back at his own 19-yard line. And the Saints signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
Here's Colton Schmidt now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. Now it's Gim. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The offense and Alvin Kamara heading back onto the field. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement down on the scoreboard. Maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. And that'll set them back five. First From the gun, it's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. Holding offense. That's on Teron Armstead, the left tackle. good for three and it's second down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. they call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Now the Bills will take another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Back. 
He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Now the quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, is our focus here in this player spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. Eh? He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Here we go. Ryan 38. Ryan 38. On first and 10, it's Taylor. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Andre Holmes that time. And now it's second down. We'll make a quick transition here. You and I were going over our stat packs from week eight of the NFL. And how about two coaches named Sean, two first-year head coaches, and the job that they're doing in the National Football League? On opposite coast, no less. Let's start out west. Sean McVay, the former wonderkind with Washington as an offensive coordinator, now running things for the Los Angeles Rams, 31 years old, has his team off to a 5-2 and two start and threatening in the NFC West. Then you come back east, now you get a defensive guy, Sean McDermott, who came from the Carolina Pan. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. and long. Taylor and company hoping to regroup after the sack. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Bills are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Saints just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Saints come out on third and four. Sneed's got nobody around him on the catch, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Saints go up by four. Bills with the ball, end of the first. Benjamin's wide open, able to make the grab, and he'll eventually be brought down, but not before getting to their own 47-yard line. Saints have the football midway through the second. Uh oh, but now we knew he's wide open here on the catch, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. The lead grows to four. Midway through the second quarter. Benjamin's got nobody around him on the deep pass. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? 
Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 12 yards on that one. It earns them a fresh set of downs. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go around. They want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Ingram again. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. That was a really nice play. He'll be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got, to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Second down following the run. To throw is Breeze. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And it'll bring up third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Full start offense. That's going to set them back five yards. The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 14. Breeze now. He's going to loft one deep left side here. Oh, he can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get him to fourth down. Credit the secondary and credit the defensive game plan. They've been in his hip pocket all game long. They understood coming in that he was a big time receiver. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 18-yard line. Call it 46 yards on the punt, just a single yard on the return as he was covered quickly. And out will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, we get a peek at Kelvin Benjamin as he heads back out there now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. On first down, it's Taylor. Bears this out for Matthews. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. 
One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Here's McCoy. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. The Bills on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This time they face a third and two. Here we go. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and two, right? So this is a situation where low man has got to win at the line of scrimmage, but it's not just the low man winning. It's the low man who's winning with some force, and they had that to pick up the first down. Barely picking it up, but they did. the give to McCoy and room to run as he's up past the 35 yard line eight yards on the pickup and now they'll have some options on second and short they're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead give it to the backs play a little bit of keep away don't you think and that's probably a good philosophy at this point going to make that defense stand up and stop them so this brings up a second and two Now they'll throw with Taylor. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Now they try the right side here. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Colton Schmidt now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Forty six on his first kick this one in that neighborhood as well. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Saints coming out now to take the field and both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change. I think a lot of the guys will go back and review so to speak because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work. Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. On first and 10, here's Breeze. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs.
delayed game offense. So that'll back him up five. Still first down. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It'll be a gain of 11, and it'll make it a second down. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape, Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Ready, five, five. Ready, Breeze to Ingram on the draw. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So here we go, first and ten now. Breeze hands to Ingram. And he'll get this across midfield to the 48. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Second and very short here, less than a yard. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, they're certainly running the ball pretty well on this drive. And all I remember as a secondary guy was if you're making a lot of tackles in a game, that's usually not good for your defense. You've got to figure out how to keep things in front of you because you know there's three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and into the secondary. And if the third level is leading your team in tackles, as a general rule, things aren't going so well for your defense. Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Now Breeze throwing on second down. Looking for Ginn, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the rookie from LSU, Tredavious White. The 30, past the 20, and he will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. Now Hausch could attack on the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Yeah. 
So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And we shift our attention to Mark Ingram. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. Now Breeze to try again after the pick six. Throwing deep here for Coleman. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And they do finally get him, but he takes it to the 25. It's a big play there for the Saints. And even 50 yards. Great patience in the pocket. Of course, it's easy to be patient when the protection's good, and it was. Yeah, you've got to pat those guys on the helmet and say thanks because they gave him plenty of time to stay back there, survey the field, go through the reads that he wanted to, and deliver the ball accurately. That was really well executed. They go play action here on first down. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. 23 yards on the play. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They come out here in the eye. They'll look to run with Ingram. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. Mark Ingram taking it in from two yards out. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. But well, Brandon, he just followed his nose, and his nose took him to the end zone. But how about the big guys up front Give him at least a stalemate in order to find that space? Yeah, the O-line won the battle in the trenches there, didn't they? It's up and good, and this now becomes a 24-21 ball game. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. 
Yeah, here come the Bills. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Taylor on first down, and that is incomplete. Charles Clay is tied in the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Now we got a second. Let's peek back to the Thursday night game, Baltimore-Miami, 40 to nothing. Baltimore, who stole the show for you? The Cat, because the game, the game <laughs> certainly did not, but the Cat did, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I do. That Cat gets on the field, what was it, third quarter of the game, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood? <laughs> And I love the moves. Even though no one was really pursuing, he was letting you know, hey, if you try and catch me, I'll juke. That's caught inside the 20. And he'll be down deep into New Orleans territory. A big play here for Buffalo. 59 yards. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, <laughs> that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. And now the offense operates in the red zone. A give to McCoy. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 11 more on that one, and another first down. Oh, he's got it going early in this one. That's the Shady McCoy. That's vintage right there, right? Breaking tackles, creating explosive runs. And if they don't take care of this early, Look out. This guy's got a big, big day. You know where he got that nickname Shady, by the way? I know you're going to educate me on it. Help me out. Mama. Mama gave him that name when he was a youngster. And if Mama <laughs> named him Shady, we're going to call him Shady. Absolutely. touchdown pass and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Hauschka now for the extra point. And then his guys will take a 10 point lead. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. Hauschka now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. Play fake here on first down. 
He'll let it fly in the direction again. And it drops down incomplete. Thought he might have had it. Instead, second down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up with that moment of truth and make a play on the football. And on second and ten now. He's been busy today. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now Breeze. Brought in left side by Sneed. 23 yards on the play. down as Breeze. And Josh Hill has it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Buffalo. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Red zone opportunity. Now a handoff to Ingram. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, and sometimes that just happens. It is the NFL. They will make some plays against you. Shotgun now for Breeze. That is caught inside the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. 
Breeze to another longtime vet again for the New Orleans first. And the offense inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count, and a five-yard penalty ensues. So pin that one on the rookie right tackle. Remember those days when the right side was simply the run-blocking side? Now you're dealing with some of the better pass rushers in the league. It'll make you a little jittery. flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. First down and goal, the offense knocking on the door. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Mark Ingram, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Saints are back within a score. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in Touchdown City. Lots will look to add the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's Mark Ingram who caps it off with a touchdown run. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Here now, a look at LaShawn McCoy, responsible for well over 100 yards of total offense, but still hasn't found the end zone. You think that's in the back of his mind going into this drive? It's always in the back of the mind of a player who's having that type of a day because you want that gratification for your work, right? You want that stamp on top of everything. But bottom line for him, he's doing great work. Sometimes it just opens it up for other people to actually get into the end zone for him. The runners you know, would they rather have 60 yards, three touchdowns, or 150 no touchdowns? I think more than likely 150 and no touchdowns. But no. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. Holding. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all.
Now Taylor to throw on second down. Caught on the right side by Jones. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. The Bills on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This will be third and six. Here we go. One, nine. From the gun, it's Taylor. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain at all on the play there. And that brings up four. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Colton Schmidt now. He's been terrific so far. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? able to get up here to the 26. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second down now after the pass completion. To throw, it's Breeze. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And this is going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot or running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Come on, let's go! One, nine. Throwing now, Taylor on first down. This complete to the tight end, Clay. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 12 yards that time, and a Bills first down. I got 
had the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now it's Taylor. The left side completion to Jones. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Second down, here's Taylor. Over the middle and caught by the tight end play. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. The Bills on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. This give is to McCoy. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. A fake to McCoy. Now it's Taylor. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. Now McCoy. And now running right through it. Rashawn McCoy off to the races. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, 54 yards, and the Bills will extend their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Here's Hauschka for the extra point. been a busy man five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead a drive that time of six plays and it ends with a LaShawn McCoy touchdown run now to kick it away. 
This fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Breeze now on first down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. And it's second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. to the air on second down. It's Breeze. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. down breeze and pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down it's a lot of contact going on there and in the end unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body everything looks pretty good until the finish 10 yards still left on second down to throw again. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. But in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet. <laughs> Not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. He dumps it down to Ingram. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Breeze, got to have this one. And that's complete to Lewis. It's a gain of 21 that time. And that leads to a New Orleans first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. on the draw gives to Camara and a short gain down to about the 33 two yards on the carry there it'll be second down this has been an up and down back and forth type of a game hasn't it maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails kind of settle things down a little bit eight yards to go here on second down movement there on the offensive line a little quick and a five yard penalty Offense. 
So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Second down and a little ways to go here. Second and 13. From the gun, it's Breeze. It's complete to Sneed. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Breeze finding Sneed there for a same first down. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. First and ten, here's Breeze. That is caught inside the five. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Brandon Coleman, a 24-yard touchdown. And the Saints have cut it back within a score. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers. That meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And the lead is down to a field goal now. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is taken about seven yards deep. They find some open field here. And he's going to wind up bringing this one inside the 45-yard line. Now that's the kind of return that warms the heart of a special teams coach. He'll be pushing us next time, Brandon, to make sure his guys are introduced in the starting lineups. These guys have such an influence on every game. The unsung heroes, remember, they have their own meetings, their own practice time, heck, their own spot on the bench in order to be ready to play each and every week. carry here for McCoy and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run and it's second and four. I like that run right there partner. Not the flashiest run not the one that's going to break for big yardage but he understands the situation and taking care of the football paramount and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball and the defense in desperate need of a stop. They have to get off the field and get the ball back to their offense if they want a chance. On second down, it's McCoy. 
And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Come on, let's go. They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. the penalty it's McCoy and he'll take this one down near the 15 and whistles and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 153 left Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. Taylor going to throw it. His throw incomplete. He was looking for Charles Clay as tight end. And that'll make it third down. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes, even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. The Bills on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and nine. Here we go! Ohio! Ohio! 
Now a handoff as they run left side. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage back at the 17. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 34. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. the main field goal. Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This is taken at his four. He's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. Personal foul. Face mask. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Taken down right at the line. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. He'll look to throw. He gets that to the rookie, Alvin Kamara. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Jerry Hill in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. He's back to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he's going to get this inside the 30. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Offense. So that one will be accepted. Tested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Back to throw. And 
that one drops to the ground, incomplete. Clock stops here, just inside of 20 seconds, 19 left. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't it? Really cut loose with that one, sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Saints on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and 15. Back to throw, Breeze. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle <laughs> yourselves. I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. The swing pass caught, and he's in for the touchdown, and barring a miracle, the extra point can win this football game. Well, that's the one they had to have. Put them in a position where they're tied up, but I got to get out of the way. We still got an extra point that's pretty crucial. <laughs> that's right, just one more element to complete the victory. Lutz will look to add the extra point. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Lutz to try to add the PAT. Ah, the rain making this treacherous, but the extra point is good, and with it, it'll give them the lead. So that drive in total eight plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. Well, this one, partner, was fun down at the very end. They got the points late, right before the whistle. Then the ensuing kickoff. They were hoping for magic on the other side, but couldn't get that spark. Fun if you won, <laughs> and fun for us, because we got to watch it and call it. That magic that you were talking about didn't occur in the end, but what a game all the way through. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.